Monday to you and welcome back to our morning devotions. Uh, yesterday was a great day at church and you know we're seeing more and more families coming back to church and as they lift the mask mandates and the COVID numbers drop, more people are feeling more comfortable. And so let me encourage you, if you are not back in church, uh, consider that greatly. Uh, the body of Christ, the family of God is, is God's plan for today. Uh, it is how we get strength and encouragement and fellowship with each other. And so uh, find your local church if you're not a part of Orchard and uh, get back in there, be involved, and uh, let iron sharpen iron as you fellowship together with your brothers and sisters in Christ. Today I want to go to 1 John chapter 5, and in this passage, uh, John is defending the understanding that Jesus is the Son of God and that he was truly the Son of God. Uh, the problem was there were some skeptics that were uh, trying to do away with the truth, uh, the truth of God's Word as we know it, that Jesus came in the flesh. And so, understanding the whole book of First John, he, he repeats two very important things. If you have the love of God, you're going to love your brothers and sisters in Christ. And if you have the love of God, you will genuinely believe in uh, the birth of Jesus Christ, that he came incarnate in the flesh uh, to be the Savior of the world. And so here in uh, 1 John chapter 5, let me read verse 6 and following. This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And so let me just pause as I go through each verse and kind of give a little commentary, running commentary. Water and blood are the typical understanding of the birth. Of water being the, the birth process, physical birth process. Blood, of course, uh, DNA and, and the biological aspect of blood. But their understanding here is for you and I that Jesus came by the water, physical birth through Mary, but blood also through the understanding that he is the incarnate Son of God. And then he says, and the Spirit is the one who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. You know, uh, true genuine followers of Jesus Christ not only have the Son of God, Savior Jesus, they have the Holy Spirit inside of them. They also have the truth, the Word of God, who Jesus came as the incarnate Son of God, and Jesus is both Word and Son of God. So we have this. Uh, the struggle for us is sometimes this 18 inches between our head and our heart, our soul of understanding, accepting, and believing. But followers of Christ have the truth and the spirit of truth uh, in us. For there are three that testify. Now he takes it a step further. This isn't just about physical birth and the uh, incarnate birth of Jesus, but he also adds the Holy Spirit to this. For there are three that testify. The Spirit, the Holy Spirit, it's a capital S in the passage. The Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree. Now notice this, if we receive the testimony of men, the testimony of God is even greater. You know, if, if someone shares good news, hey, we had a child, we had a baby, we don't doubt that. I mean, there's really no reason to doubt that. But now we have the testimony, water, blood, and spirit, the truth that Jesus Christ came as the incarnate Son of God. He literally physically was born. He literally physically walked on the face of this earth. You and I can believe that just as much as we would believe that our aunt or uncle or our cousin or our next door neighbor or our friend at church had a baby. Uh, we would never question, are you sure you had a baby? Do, do you really know that he's alive? Do, do you have a baby that's existing in this earth? Does, does he have a documentation? Does he have a birth certificate? Does he have uh, fingerprints? And we would, that'd be silly to go through all that. And yet it's so silly that people question the integrity of the scriptures and the testimony of not only the water, the blood, and the spirit of God. The spirit and the water and the blood, these three agree. If we receive the testimony of men, 
the testimony of God is even greater, for this is the testimony of God that he has borne concerning his son. You know, God has given us over and over, over the top amounts of evidence that scripture is true and that Jesus existed. I mean, historians throughout uh, the ages of history documented everything about Jesus and who he was. And there's far more evidence for the truth and the birth and the life of Jesus Christ than there are many of the actual uh, historians or even some of the great presidents of our country. There's way more evidence. And so God confirms that here. Here's verse 10. Whoever believes in the Son of God has the testimony in himself. Whoever does not believe God has made him a liar because he has not believed in the testimony that God has borne concerning his Son. You know, the, the truth is in the, the pudding, so to speak. Uh, the understanding right here uh, those who deny the existence of Jesus, they deny the birth of Christ, they deny the historicity of who Jesus is. The Bible says they don't have Christ. And so uh, we understand where the skepticism comes from. It's an actual unbelief, a disbelief in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, be encouraged. We have the evidence. We have the testimony and Jesus is the Savior, and it's why we exist, to bring honor and glory to him, to exalt his name, to lift high the banner of Christ so that other people will see our good works, they will hear the testimony of God, and they will be a part of God's family. Have a great Monday.